Your Excellencies, good morning. Um, I'm here today to talk about Aojang um, Group Holding and in specific our beverage uh, sector, which is Aojang um, Coca-Cola Beverage Company. I've been asked to talk about winning strategies for food and beverage manufacturers to enter new markets. Um, it's, it's actually funny because we um, looked at this region and there's history behind how we got here today. Um, I don't know if you know this product, Rani Float. This was actually brought originally from my, fa my father, Allah Hamam, in 1960. This concept was originated uh, in Japan. And we were importing it because the Japanese were looking at new markets to expand into. Um, it worked beautifully in this region. Why? Because this was refreshing. It was uh, tasting very good. The product quality was excellent. Um, and we thought this could work in this region. So what did we do? We did a trial. It worked well. We invested in uh, a factory in Saudi. And then we exported it in the GCC. And eventually it went to Africa. And it worked excellent. <coughs> you cannot see this letter. This letter is actually from 19... 38, we were a trading company, Aujan uh, Brothers, Abdullah uh, Aujan Brothers. It's a funny letter because the principal is a company called Chirio, which is a tomato paste company. And they're asking, why are you not taking any of our products anymore? Is there anything wrong with it? We know the quality is the best. So what's the problem? Of course, at the time, um, there were many challenges in the region. But what is important to note is quality, packaging, and pricing were critical. This is my great uncle, Abdullah. And that's the reason I was called Abdallah, by the way. Um, this is with the American, uh, British American Tobacco Company in 1940. Um, and the objective of this picture is to show you how um, hungry international companies were to exporting their products to this region. So Chirio and British American Tobacco are both examples of companies that had winning strategies and entering new markets. They were reputable brands with high quality. I wouldn't talk about the British American tobacco as high quality. Um, they had a unique selling point. They have competitive pricing. Their terms and conditions worked well for this region in the 30s. And logistics, we all know the route into India um, had a stopover you know, between here and Bahrain. So what happened to us, we were, as I said, a trading company, um, diversified. We were doing everything from sugar to tobacco to Nestle. I know some of you here are from Nestle. We're not doing it anymore, as you, as you are aware. Um, we have and continue to do Vimto. We did, some, we did some biscuits as well. But what happened over the years is that we started to focus. Um, and focused eventually led us to be into the beverage business. As you can see, Rani was established in 79 as a factory. 82, we launched it. We did Barbican afterwards, which is a non-alcoholic beer. And we started expanding out of Saudi. So we went into Dubai. We have a factory in DIP. Um, 
and then we built a factory in Egypt and in Lebanon to supply the markets around the region. In 2012, Coke came uh, knocking and we did an agreement with them, a joint venture, which shows that we we're very proud being a brand from the region selling to a multinational. So it is possible, but it took us a very long time to do it. Nowadays, you get to see, uh, especially the millenn millennials, thinking that they can do things overnight, which is uh, quite funny in my opinion. It took, us, it took us a long time to reach where we are today. But, um, but there was a lot of focus on, on, our, on our business. Um, and I think th this was critical. So how did Ojan become successful in entering new markets with our beverage brands? Number one, as I mentioned, was our packaging. Our packaging was critical. We have aluminum can, which we event eventually went into vertical integration and invested in an aluminum can uh, factory in Saudi. So that, this product, not only is it recyclable, but it's very easily transportable. So we were able to you know, ship it all over the world, actually. Uh, shelf life is, is very high because it's pasteurized and the quality was excellent and still is excellent. We had a competitive price, so we were able to ship it to uh, regions where there is already competition, but we were able to market it uh, and innovate very, very well. The currency worked well for us, so we had um, great opportunities to grow the product due to the currency situation being pegged to the dollar, and at the time, it was very favorable to us. And we had favorable geopolitics, so there wasn't much wars around, around the, the region that we were operating in. And I will show you another funny letter afterwards. Um, we understand the consumer, we understand what they want, um, but we're continuously innovating, as uh, my colleague is, uh, has been doing. And we have to be quick to respond to uh, changes in consumer tastes and preferences. And these are the, some of the issues that you have to be quick to respond to. Um, if there's any forex exchange uh, changes, how do, you, how do you do with your product? Uh, sugar tax has been very popular uh, in, in the last six months. And I agree with you, it's been somewhat of a challenge trying to understand how the um, mechanism came about it. And there's obviously environmental issues that we have to be very aware of. And hence, uh, plastic will be, I think, the next big issue. Um, hence, I'm very excited about the aluminum can. Now, this is a very funny um, letter, also was sent to my uncle. Uh, Abdullah al Ojana brothers in 1944. Um, it was from the Nichols family, who we are still in relationship with, and they are actually our uh, partners with the Vimto brand. Basically, saying, guys, we cannot ship you Vimto from the UK because there is a war, uh, <laughs> World War II at the time. So, um, geopolitics. Um, has always been familiar with us as a family, and we always try to find ways of uh, avoiding or going around this challenge. So, today there are obstacles that are making our current export model into new territories unworkable. Why? There's a lot of protectionism that we're seeing in the region um, that we are operating in from the individual countries to protect their um, internal um, biz, uh, uh, companies or industries, which I can totally understand. High tariffs, we are seeing high tariffs everywhere nowadays. Um, as we, some of you might know, in Iraq, they have you know, done uh, you know, uh, very, very high tariff imp implementation, as well as border closures, bans on certain products, Bureaucracy. 
So what is the solution? And this is again from Ojan's perspective, how we see things from our own eyes. Is you have to be a, a, a presence locally and you need to invest in those particular geographies in order for you to avoid these different um, obstacles. Again, free trade agreements are very, very um, uh, apparent and they've been existing for a very long time. Um, but this one caught my attention, which is the African Continental Free Trade Area that is looking to tie up 54 countries in Africa to have a very open uh, trade between the countries. And I think that that's a great opportunity for us, being in Egypt, we'll be able to ship you know, all over the African continent. Um, so in a nutshell, really, this is from my own eyes, um, how Ojan has experienced the, uh, the, um, the entering into the new markets, and uh, I hope it's been helpful.